Good morning campers. So I didn't quite get my flip through Friday. <laughs> so this will be another flip through not Friday, but I suppose it's close enough. So what we're going to start to do now is go through my coloring book collection. Now I know that for a lot of other people, they generally try to do this in two or three videos and they, you know, they might show an image or two out of each book, but for the most part, they're just getting through the actual books in the collection. I want to show my coloring book collection, but I want to go a little slower with it. I figure we can combine my coloring book collection along with some flip throughs. Um, as to, I may not make any new purchases here. Well, let's be real. <laughs> I'm going to make some new purchases, but this serves a couple different purposes. It allows me to do flip throughs of my collection. There may be books here I've flipped through before, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again um, as part of the, of the collection series. I'll probably keep this as a specific part of like its own playlist or something like that. And as I get new books, um, of course, those will be added to these videos as well. The second benefit to doing this is this is really going to allow me to kind of weed through my books. I am pretty close to just being at max capacity to way, the way I have everything stored right now. And I like the setup I have. So um, if I do want more books in the future, I'm going to have to let some go, which is good for you guys because that means gift giveaways. So this will allow me to kind of go through my collection one at a time and see, you know, is this a book I'm really going to keep? Is this a book I'm going to get rid of? There's two already this morning as I was starting this that I'm already kind of on the fence about. And those I put off to the side because I'm not going to do a flip through if I'm not 100% sure I'm keeping them. So anyway, as you can tell, we have five to go through today. I probably should have made it a smaller video, fewer books, because uh, three of these are a pretty significant size, but that's okay. We will start with the Color Me series. So there are a number of these books out. I'm sure one of these has a list somewhere. Let me see. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, these might be the three. I think there's, well, there's a Color Me Column, of course. That's the most well-known one. Um, Color Me Column, I think I've put, either put on the chopping block or it's already gone. I'm not really sure. Um, I haven't checked that. But these three books were ones that I found that I like a lot of the pictures in them. So I am probably going to keep these. All of the Color Me series are um, illustrated by Angela Porter and they're by Lacey Mucklow. And uh, there's different ones. We'll go ahead and start going through these. The first one here is Color Me Happy, 100 coloring templates that will make you smile. Again, Lacey Mucklow and Angela Porter. Color Me Calm, like I said, is probably the best known of the series. I think it was the very first book that was put out. Um, each of these has a slightly different feel to it, obviously. So, um, actually, I may have gave Color Me Calm someone. I don't know. I'll have to look later. <laughs> My, all the books I have slated for giveaways are in this... Uh, bin that's up above my head and way too heavy to be that high and so hopefully I won't like you know injure myself pulling that down and smacking myself in the face with it. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my little kitty bookmarks here. As you can tell it's obvious I've been in this book a lot from <laughs> the spine. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Oh, before we get started, as we always do, let me grab. Creative Haven books are always good to compare to because they're kind of an average size book. So, oh, not that one, though. There we go. So in comparison to an average size coloring book, if the bottom part is level, these are shorter than your average coloring book, but they are a little bit wider. So keep that in mind. And in terms of content, 
these books are a really good size. I mean, look, you get a hundred different pictures, so to color, plus there's other information in this book. So it's a really good size book. I think these books typically run between maybe ten and fifteen dollars on Amazon. I found a three pack of these at Ollie's for I'm not lying, y'all. I found a three pack for three dollars. It's probably the best coloring book deal I have ever gotten. I think it was the Color Me Calm, Color Me Stress Free, and it might have been this one. Um, but it was a pack of three for three dollars, and they were wrapped in plastic. I mean, they weren't used or anything. And I found those at Ollie's. I found these books occasionally at Ollie's, so if you do have one, I suggest going there and looking around. Um, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I might be, I think that's where I got Color Me Hap Happy. I might have got Color Me Fearless from that too. But anyway, it was a three set for $3, which again, I think was the best coloring book deal I've ever gotten. So if you have an Ollie's and you like these books, I would suggest keeping an eye out. Different Ollie's will carry different books, but um, I think last time I went, they might have had a couple copies of like Color Me Calm or something, but they definitely did. The sets went quickly. People were pretty smart with those. So you have a content section <clears throat> in different chapters. This is Color Me Happy, so you have nature, animals, and babies, music, food and drink, whimsical imagery, and art and architecture. Here is the intro. All of the colored images are one-sided, which is really nice. The paper is, I would say it's not Joanna Basford book level, but it's, it's, slightly better than creative haven type paper it's a thicker paper in my opinion so you could easily use markers in this book let me back out a little while we run through the intro there we go so you can see both sides you do get some inspiration pictures um, at the start of each chapter and at the start of the book why make a coloring book for adults as children many of us enjoy coloring in our favorite characters or scenes in books with our trusty pack of crayons but as we got older, added responsibilities came along, which pushed push aside all those things we used to do for sheer enjoyment. But there is no rule that says we should stop all the fun. I'm not going to read through all this, but... Um, active coloring can be fun and meditative in and of itself, bringing about joy just through the simple act of picking up a colored pencil or crown and focusing your creativity and thoughts on a single coloring exercise. There is no right or wrong way to color. This is important to me. There is no right or wrong way to use this book. You have the freedom to color in it however you wish and in whatever way works best for you. Conceptually, the images chosen fall into topics that are universally found that evoke joyous or upbeat responses to people, such as nature, babies and animals, music, food and drink, whimsical imagery, and so on. So it continues on. And then here it does have a color tip. It says cool colors are considered to have calming qualities while the warmer colors have more activating qualities. Bright colors tend to have more energy, pastel, softer energy. Just some basic color, I guess you call it color theory, maybe. Probably not. I'm way off probably on that. But So the first chapter starts up and we have nature. And another inspirational image here. Um, several universal images that make people happier, including those of nature. Thinking about the simplicity and basics of the natural world, especially when caught up in the stresses of an urban lifestyle, can bring contentment and feelings of gladness. At the end of this chapter, there's a blank panel for you to draw and color your own image of something you find particularly happy in nature. You don't have to do it, but it's there. So here are some inspirations. We do have mandalas in this book, in these books. So we will probably be coloring out of one of these this month, I think. This might be the next, one of these books might be the next mandala book, uh, mandala mania image we do. All right, so I've zoomed in a little. We're gonna just look at this side. 
each page now is one-sided they will have a light pattern like this on the back side of the page each page has an image there are a variety of images and then you have this little um, piece here to just indicate which chapter you're in all right i'm going to try to go through these quickly because we have so many images i'm going to make sure one of the books we're not going to see one of the images because i cut it out i don't know what i was doing here but i was going for some bright neon colors is what i was doing i think that was one of those nights i was having trouble finding something to color and i just couldn't get get the fire going so to speak that one's cute So a good variety of what I would consider different art styles in here. You have some abstract. You have more of a realistic drawing style. Here's a good one. You have mandalas. And there is the blank page. Animals and babies. Some of us, it may be both. Some of us, it may be one or the other. <laughs> uh, when viewing a young child or baby animal, we tend to respond with a nurturing reaction, which often elicits a positive feeling. Please tell me there are kittens in this chapter. Another, again, there's a blank panel at the end of this one as well. There's a kitty. Oh, that's cute. All right. So this is chapter two. Not going to lie, y'all probably aren't going to see me color any of the baby pictures. Not that I have any problems with babies or your baby or anybody else's baby. It's just, I tend to be more drawn to animals than I am babies on this chapter. So, there's that one I was looking at. I don't know why. I've been like that my whole life. Other people, and that's probably why I don't have kids. <laughs> but no, other people would bring, like, you know, somebody would be out for um, maternity leave, and they'd bring their baby in for everybody to see, and everybody would, you know, do that kind of coo, ooh, and ah over the baby. And I'm over there, like, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to go over and say hi and stuff. I'm not, like, being rude about it, but... I'm also kind of like, it's a baby. And I'm like, okay, it's a baby. You know? <laughs> I've been like that my whole life. It is frustrating at times because you feel, you feel different, I guess. Or I feel different. I never sat there and thought, there's something wrong with people that do that with babies. I, again... I gave up judging people a long time ago. Here's your blank page. It just, that was never me. And I, if anything, I felt weird not being that kind of person. Music. From a primitive drum beat to a complex orche orchestral, orchestral symphony. Music of all kinds has permeated the psyche and emotions of people for thousands of years. I think there's a blank panel for each of these so uh, each of these chapters but now that's just the only baby I was around really growing up was my parents had my brother when I was 12 and so I mean I was really I really participated in you know helping out with him when he was a baby and toddler and stuff and it just I mean, obviously, I'd do anything in the world for him, even now, but it didn't, like, elicit any sort of motherly instinct, I guess, in me. So, like I said, I wasn't judgy about it. If anything, I felt different for not being that way. That's a pretty image. So... I don't know. 
anyway, didn't mean to go off on that kind of <laughs> feel that kind of uh, introspective discussion. Food and drink. For thousands of years, food and drink have been at the center of celebrations, whether it be among close family and friends or large gatherings to commemorate birthdays, weddings, sporting events, rites of passage, or other special occasions. Oh, yeah, you throw cupcakes in there. and you <laughs> Now, cupcakes, on the other hand, cake. Cake makes my day. Sushi's not bad either. Now we start talking about images of cakes and then the whole ball game changes people. Eh. Now this one may end up being a little longer just because there's going to be a lot of images to flip through on these. so. But it would be nice to go ahead and get them in one go since they're all similar type books. Whimsical imagery. <clears throat> Whimsical images naturally make a smile or are meant to inspire joy, lightheartedness, and unrestraint. That's cool. another color long. Mumble, 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 mumble. There we go. Still feeling very similar to how I felt on Wednesday, but, and I will talk about this, of course, more in the next color and chat, I do have a therapy appointment at, in a town that's about half an hour away from me here in about a week and a half so hooray for that let me tell you hmm <laughs> rabbits are cute Boy, I'm having some real issue getting these out. I think I'm going to have to order some more of these, actually. Okay. Blank page. And now, we move to Art and Architecture, Chapter 6. Throughout history, mankind has created art and architecture not only for practical purposes, but also as a means to share innovation and reflect its cultural foundations. There we go. I'm having to adjust how I flip through these. So these will probably have a little more of an abstract feel to them. Not all of them, but just just a feeling. I do like the different chapters. It helps make it easier to find if there's a particular type of image you want to color. It makes it easier to find that image, find an image related to that when they're done in chapters like this. I think I just finished a color quest picture with this. It might be my next speed color. I don't know yet. Either that or a slow color of um, like a color pencil lend all it or something. There's the blank page. You get a blank page at the end. You could theoretically use this side to test your mediums if you want to. This is the back of the book. Gives a little a summary of what's in there and then give some info on Lacey Mucklow and Angela Porter. So that is Color Me Happy. 
that is banging around my stuff. Now we have Color Me Stress Free. Again, 100 coloring templates. Lacey Mucklow and Angela Porter. Now you notice the happy one had a lot of bright yellows and greens to it. And then this one looks like it's having more blues and greens. So there are the chapters. Introductions very similar to um, the other introduction, but here it says conceptually and color me stress free. The chapters are divided into seven of the most common stressors experienced by people worldwide. The color tip looks very, looks about the same. So the intros are similar, but they do talk at greater length about the actual chapters in each individual book. So disorganization. Stressors can impact us even more deeply when the source of the stress is over something we feel we should have a certain amount of control. Ha! Ha! I could write that sentence out and put it on the wall. <laughs> it's also really stressful when it's something outside your area of control. At least for me it is. Huh, something got on this page it looks like. Oh no! Well, I guess I did. Some of the colored pencil must have bled over. The picture I did must have been part of this chapter because I see where I cut it out in front of it. But I guess some of the colored pencil bled over. Huh. Well, that's a surprise. That's a possibility. That makes me cross-eyed just looking at that one. But, um, yeah, see, with me, organization never seems to be, like, a, uh, I organize and I'm done. It seems like it's a constant flux state for me. I'm constantly changing how things are. I don't just organize it a certain way and leave it be. Relationships. There's no doubt that other people, familiar or strange, can be a major life stressor. And again... Telling me <laughs> what I what I need to what I need to hear there. It's interesting the imagery here associated with relationships. I can see it in some of these images and it makes sense to me. But this would definitely be like a thinking cap kind of thing to me. Like some of these I'd really have to sit there and go, okay, how is this related? Looks like you get your blank pages in this one too. Finances. One of the perpetual stressors in the history of mankind is finances, particularly personal finances, and having enough provisions to meet your family's needs. Same thing here about, you know, maybe there's a particular image that just calls out to you. That's kind of the way it was with me. I, I hit one and which one did I grab? Was it one in relationships? I think it was. Castle Art Pencils do really well in this book, by the way. That was what I used to color in the image that I did end up cutting out. Um, and they worked really well. They were nice and vibrant. So that's one thing I can tell you that works well in this book. Work. Without question, one of life's biggest daily stressors is from our place of employment. This is like the book about my life. <laughs> like I said, all these follow a very similar format. They're one-sided. They have like a little pattern image on the other side. 
you could use markers with them or or paints or anything but just I would put a page behind it just to avoid any potential bleed through because that seemed to happen even with just colored pencil on that previous page so I'm not really sure what happened there but mm, maybe we were making such good time and then I stop and I'm like ooh shiny Oh, there was one. Ha ha. I did miss it. Health. <laughs> Are we running through the book? I mean, relationships might be the one thing that I am not stressed out about right now, but pretty much like everything else I'm hitting up in this book. Health. Health concerns are common stressors among adults, especially as we get older. Thanks, book. Appreciate it. flip the different way these aren't hardback but they're not like super soft paperbacks either it's a pretty tough little cover on them yeah about the disorganization thing organizing is not my problem it's maintaining that organization that is where i have problems time time is one of the most precious commodities in our human existence and managing it can induce great amounts of stress like i said you notice there's a lot more blues and greens in this book supposed to be more of a calming effect I suppose hmm. yeah I haven't looked through these in a while it's like you get all these books and you're like I'm gonna color this and I'm going to color that and then you don't look again in the book for months. Oop. Slipped ahead on you. Number seven, travel and commuting. Yep. Whether you're flying internationally or just commuting to work, travel can put an extreme amount of stress on people. Road rage, anyone? Remember when I had to drive like anywhere from two and a half to three hours a day for work and I did that for four and a half years and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy it was pretty pretty rough I think this is the last chapter in the book oh well, that's cool kind of like that one Which I guess if traveling on a plane stresses you out, coloring a picture with a plane in it might not be your cup of tea. But sometimes I wish I was on a plane. I don't mind flying. It's actually still kind of exciting for me even though I've flown roughly a half dozen times now it's still kind of cool and exciting like I'm a little kid flying for the first time I'll probably forever be like that <laughs> my brother got the plane tickets this year I said we are not going to have the incident we had last year 
And he goes, no. And he went ahead and, like, actually spelled out my name to make sure there wasn't going to be a problem. Uh, on the back is a summary of the info that we looked over in the book and then talks about, again, Lacey McLeod and Angela Porter. Last one I have of the Color Me series is Color, Color Me Fearless. One's got more of a green, not super calm, but kind of bright too. Vibrant, there you go. Vibrant's the way to do to say that one. Um, conceptually in Color Me Fearless, the chapters are divided into seven characteristics that are critical to the development of fearlessness. Courage, strength, resilience, confidence, power, adventure, and freedom, and that can t continue to be cultivated as you become more intrepid. Got your color tip. Let me grab a drink real quick. We have chapter one courage. One of the first things that typically comes to mind when thinking about fear is being able to conquer it with courage. Ooh, we got our knight and our castle. Actually, I kind of like that mandala. And of course, you think of courage. You're going to think of like the cowardly lion and the Wizard of Oz. That's at least what I think when I look at that one. You've got your knight and your castle. That one's pretty cool. I like that one a lot. I think that's the one I was just talking about. I love these little tabs, but oh my goodness. So easy to pick up two of them when you just want one. And this one's got your blank page too. Chapter two, strength. In order to be fearless, you must you first must have the strength to face the challenge. I like how that tree is colored with the different color leaves. I think that's cool. And you've got the mandala with the actual sword, which is also very cool. When I was thinking mandala books, I really should have pulled these out. I don't know why my brain didn't make that kind of connection. Sorry, I'm not yapping quite as much as I typically do. Um, with these and the number of images in them, I'd I'm mostly trying to get through them quickly because I want to be able to show them in their entirety, but I also don't want to be here for two hours doing this. <sighs> I have no idea what I'm doing this weekend. Pretty much whatever. Sorry, just making sure. I feel like I'm... No, I'm not. Okay. Blank. Resilience. I can see that being part of resilience. <clears throat> Having resilience, the ability to bounce back from something difficult or traumatic, is an important factor in being fearless. That picture and that one. But, um, I have been thinking about trying cross stitch. The only thing that worries me is I'm pretty sure that's got to be one of those things where you can see a lot of detail. And as we know, I have to use a magnifying glass sometimes to really see fine details in the pictures that I color. So I do worry that it will be something that's really hard for me to see as I'm doing it. If you have cross, if you cross stitch or have cross stitched, let me know what you think of it in the comments. 
I've learned my lesson about buying a bunch of stuff towards a habit, though. And, um, ooh, that's almost like a stained glass. You could make the background. But, um, let me know in the comments what you think. What kind of skills should be required. Like, am I, am I going to have to get one of those magnifying glasses that, like, I can latch on to something and then constantly use for it or what I'm probably just gonna get like a basic kit there's a Dover book I think looks pretty neat that I might order but um, if you have any suggestions on basic supplies or whether or not it's a good idea let me know fearlessness usually contains a component of confidence having the assurance that you can prevail over that which seems intimidating or even possible impossible goodness knows i could use some courage or courage confidence i could probably use some courage too but that one's cute i saw that one when i was flipping through these earlier and i thought it was i thought it was a cute one yeah, I can use a good dose of confidence, that's for sure. But I was thinking of that. I was thinking of maybe just getting some painting stuff out this weekend and playing around with that. I don't know yet. My problem is I'll get an idea of something and even if I just go ahead and start doing it within an hour or two my brain's just like eh, okay I'm done with this. <laughs> so it's like as soon as I get it out and actually start working on it for a significant amount of time my brain is over it by that point. Power. There is a certain amount of power that comes with being fearless. Ooh, we got a dragon. Oh, I skipped one. Knew I skipped one that time. Ha ha. I will have to go back through these. Well. Yeah, we're getting to that point, folks. There's your dragon. We have adventure. When we are fearless, a sense of adventure can flourish. Ooh, now that one's cool. That might be the one we do on camera. Yeah, that might be the one we do on camera. I don't know. It's definitely different, and I like that a lot. Those fish are like bigger than that dude. I don't know if I'd be so calm sitting there. It looks like the planets are a bunch of balloons. Lifting them. That's cool. That was the one I was kind of on to at the beginning. Chapter 7, Freedom. If you're not bound by fear, then only freedom can result. So yeah, obviously I can't get into like cross stitch this weekend, so 
I probably need to work on organizing some stuff. I'm in that I want to get rid of stuff mood, but I also know that when I'm in that kind of mood, I need to sit on decisions for a little bit. I like that one with the birds. Because, you know, you just get in that mood where you're like, just, oh, get rid of everything. Just toss it all out. And then, you know, two weeks later, why did I do that? So, some of the stuff I need to sit on for a while and make sure that's what I really want to do. Because I am one of those people, it's a pack rat, and as soon as I get rid of something, I will find a need for it. Oh, so that is the last image in that book, I think. So, there is Color Me Fearless. Alright, now we're moving away from the Color Me series, and we're going to go from calming, stress-free, happy, to clutter. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a look into my life here. Color Me Cluttered, a coloring book to transform everyday chaos in the art. This is by Dural Godfrey. Hopefully I'm not mispronouncing that. As far as comparing books, where did I put that stupid thing? There it is. It is, so they're flush at the bottom. It is just, it's right the same size as an average coloring book. It may be just a little bit wider which is why it feels weird in my hand. Like I'm sitting here it, uh, and thinking something's different with this one, but that's what it is. It's just slightly wider, enough to the point where you notice it, but not really. Does that make any sense? I know I showed this one um, a while back, but I know I showed this one as one I purchased from was this one of the ones? I think it's the one I got from Book Outlet. Sorry. I should have gave y'all a better look at the cover. Introduction. Hang on, let me back out. Oh, one more. There we go. As an illustrator, I've always loved drawing people's personal spaces. To me, clutter is beautiful, the stuff of our everyday lives. Within these drawings, I've lost and found coffee mugs and eyeglasses, along with two penguins, two lava lamps, a couple of bunnies, and the occasional kitten. See if you can find them amidst the clutter. So these are single-sided images. Thank goodness they are not perforated. The paper doesn't feel super smooth. It's a bit, it's a little bit toothy. It's not bad. I wouldn't say it's not Amazon printed paper level toothy, but it's not super smooth either. It's kind of in between. Now, some of these images might stress some of you out. Some of you may even be motivation. You might look at it and think, Oh my goodness, now I need to go clean or something. Have y'all done that? Like, kitty. Were those the coffee cups he was talking about? <laughs> but like, have you guys ever watched a show like Hoarders? And I mean, obviously you feel bad for the people that are in the... That, that are a part of the show and... I don't know to me I know they're letting people letting the camera crew come into their lives but I'm sure there's you know an incentive involved as to why they would do that and to me you know there's a whole higher level discussion about dignity and respect and stuff like that and I don't think the the shows like the creators of the show ever disrespect people but anyway past all that did any of y'all ever watch a show like that? Or you watch a show where you see a lot of clutter and then you almost get an itch to clean. 
because you're seeing it somewhere else. I have done that. I will gladly admit it. Heck, I've watched my 600 pound life and been like, I need to quit stuffing my face with cinnamon. Cinnamon toasters is the Malto meal version of cinnamon toast crunch. I'll look at those and go, I need to quit stuffing my face with cinnamon toasters. I don't watch a lot of, I used to watch Hoarders quite a bit, I think in the early seasons, and I don't really watch it anymore. I feel, it doesn't feel right now when I watch it, if that makes any sense. I feel uncomfortable for the people that are in that particular episode. And if it involves animals, no, uh-uh, can't do it, cannot do it, I will bawl my eyes out, I just, I can't. I would start watching them if I figured out animals were in the episode. We, I would just have to move to a different one. Just couldn't do it. In young kids too bothered me a lot. <sighs> now on that depressing note. Anyway, are there any shows like that you watch them and they just make you want to do like the opposite of what the show's about? Had that one. Oh, probably because that one with the little white feet down there reminded me of Felix. I bet that's why I put a mark on that. Now, see, this, this just ugh, drives me crazy. Like, all that wax. And you're just thinking of, like, a wood dresser or something. You're like, all of that wax on that dresser. Oh, my God. I bet five different people could go through this book and point out five different images that make them the most uncomfortable. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just really, I'm just really fascinated by humanity, like individuality, I guess. How one person can just be so completely different than someone else. Anyway, about the author, Darrell God has been drawing people's clutter since art school and illustrated for many years for Glamour Magazine in New York. She has also illustrated many books about style, fashion, how-to, and cooking. Here is the back of the book. Alright, last one. And this one I may actually color out of today. I kept looking at Book Outlet and kept looking at this book and it was something drawing me the book. I don't know what it was, but I finally got it. This is the Wicked Plants Coloring Book by Amy Stewart and Brioni Morrow Cribs. Hopefully that's all right. 40 Botanical Atrocities to Color and Keep. We all know I love my weird coloring books, and I would say out of the collection today, this is my weird coloring book. All right, so comparisons. If I keep it flush at the bottom, it is a little shorter than an average coloring book. Well, not a little, but it's definitely shorter. And when I make them flush on this edge, it is also not quite as wide. Pretty close, though. So, beware, even horticulture has a dark side. So, there's 40 botanical atrocities to color and keep. I know, I know. But really, are you all that surprised? And it's, no. Well, that would be the case, Michelle. If it's not being sold on Amazon, obviously it's not going to have Amazon printed paper. So. This book belongs to Paige. Consider yourself warned. Consider. Considered. Consider yourself warned. A tree sheds poison daggers. A glistening red seed stops the heart. A shrub causes intolerable pain. A vine intoxicates. Within the plant kingdom lurk unfathomable, unfathomable evils. Unfathomable. Unfathomable. Uh, unknown evils, okay? Let's just... <laughs> anyway. Plants are monastery monster let me take a drink just let me take a breath 
Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Plants that are monstrously ill-mannered deserve recognition, too. Kudzu has devoured cars and buildings in the American South, and a seaweed known as killer algae escaped from Jacques Cousteau's Oceanographic Museum in Monaco and continues to smother ocean floors around the world. So I like weird stuff, as we all know. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to pronounce most of these. This is a weird book, and the reason why I think I'm going to color one of these, these are fairly straightforward images. Um, you get the name of the plant, aconite, asinite, I'm not sure. In eight, I'm not going to read all these, I'll just read this first one. In 1856, a dinner party in Scotland came to a horrible end when a servant, who had been sent outside to dig up horseradish, instead uprooted asinite. The cook grated it into a sauce and promptly killed two priests who were guests at dinner. Even today, it is e easily mistaken for an edible herb. 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 <sighs> what is wrong with me this morning? <laughs> The spikes of blue flowers give the plant its common name, monk's hood, because the uppermost sepal, sepal is shaped like a helmet or hood. What is with the words today in these books? I just, anyway. So each of these are, have like, I guess, a little story about them. They have what family they're part of, their habitat, what they're native to, their common name. And it looks like this one has two different ones. And then it has the name of them over here as well. I know, I know. You're like, why? I don't know why. I just think weird stuff's fascinating to me. I remember in a previous... Um, actually in the color and chat I was talking about running into a situation where I was having trouble figuring out what to talk about and my husband told me a weird fact yesterday and I, it wasn't like about plants deadly nightshade now this one I know about although the entire plant is poisonous just rubbing up against it can cause cause ugh, can raise pustules on the skin ew the blackberries are the plant's most tempting feature. Isn't that fun? The pages are one-sided. Um, if you don't care too much about this part of it, you could use markers or whatever. I'm sure it's still going to bleed through. Um, the paper is smooth and smoother and um, fairly thick pages. So um, I might pull out my prismacolors or my black I should pull out my black widow pencils for the wicked plants that that seems appropriate does it not okay habanero chili okay I know oh it will bind to a fat like butter milk or cheese it does not dissolve in water, so grabbing for the water jug to put the fire in your mouth is useless. But it will bind to a fat like butter, milk, or cheese. Huh. And alcohol also works as a solvent. See, look at the things. This is a learning channel on top of a coloring channel. <laughs> oh, y'all probably think I'm nuts. You wouldn't be the first ones, nor would you be the last. Kudzu, I've actually, if that's how you say it, um, this stuff is invasive. Like, you get that stuff started, and it will cover. I've seen a lot of post-apocalyptic books or shows and stuff where kudzus. That was a cat trying to come in through the window. Um, where marijuana. <laughs> Oh gosh. Anyway, some of these are a little, little familiar. Just through either I've read them through books or, you know, hey, I live in a rural southern state area. So, you know, some of these, some of these are familiar. That's about all I'm going to say about that. Rat Bane. 
realized some of these were deadly. Oh, so there's deadly and dangerous and okay. Okay, I see. Painful. The stinging tree. Well, that one would be obvious to me. If somebody pointed out a tree and said it's the stinging tree, I wouldn't go near it. Strict nine tree. Oh my gosh. Again, and another tree. You go through to a, you hear somebody call something a suicide tree. Are you really going to go over and start chewing on the leaves? I mean, seriously. Now, I know tobacco leaves can actually be uh, very toxic. Um, tobacco is one of those crops that gets uh, grown a lot around here, and they're constantly needing people to help um, at the end of the, at the harvest, yeah, at harvest time to uh, process the tobacco. And if you get it in your bloodstream, it can make you extremely sick. That's not an uncommon thing around here. Draw your own plant. <laughs> oh, you got a couple pages like that. And then you got a little bit, a little blurb about Amy Stewart. She is the award-winning author of six books on the perils and pleasures of the natural world. Brioni Morrow Cribs completed her MFA at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, um, where she also taught etching. So it looks like Amy Stewart probably provided the info and Mauro Cribs was the one that actually did the illustration. So we have Wicked Plants. That's the one we just did, right? Yes. This cover looked a little different. You have Wicked Bugs, The Drunken Botanist, and The Earth Moved on the Remarkable Achievements of Earthworms. See, this stuff's in my lane. This is the kind of stuff that's just... Oh, so that's the actual book. That's Wicked Plants. They made a coloring book out of that, too. Okay. Wickedplants.com. Okay. So, actually, we stayed at about an hour, which is pretty average for my flip-throughs. So, I must have been going pretty speedy. 30 speed through these. <sighs> Let's see. All right. There we go. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, for now, flip through Fridays, if I do them on Fridays or any other days, is basically going to be just slowly working my way through my coloring book collection. If I get new books in, we'll probably run through those too. Um, this way you kind of get the best of both worlds. You can see what I have in my collection, plus you also get the flip throughs of them. I hope you enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.